In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Welcome to St Mary's Cathedral for today's very special celebration of the Sacrament of Confirmation for the parishes of the St George Deanery. Here in the Mother Church of Sydney and of all Australia, our young people will complete their initiation into the family of God, the Church. I acknowledge participating in this confirmation ceremony today, Auxiliary Bishops Terry Brady, Richard Umbers and Danny Ma, and can celebrating with us several brother priests, the pastors of your parishes. You've heard the saying, it takes a village to raise a child. Well, this is equally true of the raising of young Christians in the faith. And so I want especially to recognise all those who've assisted our confirmands in their ongoing journey of Christian initiation, formation and life. Their families and teachers, catechists and sponsors, pastors and parish staff, a big salute to all of you. And finally, to my young friends who will be receiving this sacrament today, a very warm welcome. Brothers and sisters, baptism and confirmation call us to be saints for our times, and so we repent of the times we failed to be. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
Let us pray. Grant, we pray, almighty and merciful God, that the Holy Spirit coming near and dwelling graciously within us may make of us a perfect temple of his glory. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the prophet Ezekiel. The Lord says this, I am going to take you from among the nations and gather you together from all the foreign countries and bring you home to your own land. I shall pour clean water over you and you will be cleansed. I shall cleanse you of all your defilement and all your idols. I shall give you a new heart and put a new spirit in you. I shall remove the heart of stone from your bodies and give you a heart of flesh instead. I shall put my spirit in you and make you keep my laws and sincerely respect my observances. You will live in the land which I gave your ancestors. You shall be my people, and I will be your God. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. The Spirit comes to help us in our weakness. For when we cannot choose words in order to pray properly, the Spirit himself expresses our plea in a way that could never be put into words. And God, who knows everything in our hearts, knows perfectly well what he means. And that the pleas of the saints expressed by the Spirit are according to the mind of God. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, and went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day, as he usually did. He stood up to read, and they handed him the scroll of the prophet Isaiah. Unrolling the scroll, he found the place where it is written, The Spirit of the Lord has been given to me, for he has anointed me. He has sent me to bring the good news to the poor, to proclaim liberty to captives and the blind new sight, to set the downtrodden free, to proclaim the Lord's year of favor. He then rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the assistant and sat down. And all eyes in the synagogue were fixed on him. Then he began to speak to them. This text is being fulfilled today, even as you listen. And he won the approval of all. And they were astonished by the gracious words that came from his lips. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you. Grace, Archbishop Anthony, Bishop Terry, Bishop Danny, and Bishop Richard, 
the parents of these candidates and the parish priest present these candidates for the sacrament of confirmation and testify that they have been prepared by St. Joseph's Oatley, St. Declan's Penshurst and St. Bernadette's Carlton and are ready to receive the sacrament of confirmation. We request that you confer the sacrament of confirmation to these candidates. It is with great joy that I receive these candidates for confirmation and will confer on them the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Please be seated. One of the great things about living in the 21st century is the ease of communication. Mobile calls, FaceTime and Zoom, text messages, email, Instagram, Facebook, Messenger, TikTok and the rest. As our young people know best of all, we are truly spoilt for choice. And we would have suffered so much more during the COVID lockdowns were it not for these technologies. Earlier tools, such as some of the older ones here may remember, included faxes and pages, aerograms and telegrams, drums and beacons, messenger pigeons and runners but these all had their limitations. But for thousands of years, the mainstay of communicating at a distance was the handwritten letter. Our own St Paul was fond of letters. 13 of the 21 New Testament books are epistles attributed to him. But whether or not our young people will write many letters in their lifetimes, they'll probably have seen in movies or on history programs that important documents used to have a seal affixed to them. Now by a seal I don't mean a squawking sea mammal. I mean a blob of wax, usually red, into which was imprinted some image and words, and which was then used at the bottom of the document to end it or to seal the document closed. The seal served as a guarantee of authenticity since only the sender would have had the ring that made the impression in the wax. If the document arrived with the seal intact, the recipient could rest assured it had not been tampered with. And because seals were used only by civil, ecclesiastical or business officials, they carried a certain cachet of authority. Even today, important documents come with the papal seal or the Australian coat of arms or the great seal of the United States impressed upon them. Well, my young friends, in a few moments from now, when one of the bishops marks your forehead with chrism and says, be sealed 
with the gift of the Holy Spirit. You will be the rolled up parchment or enveloped document upon which a wax seal is placed. The imprint will be on your soul. It will assure everyone that you are a communique from God and assure you that you have a mission as a member of God's family. And that powerful imprint will be there for life and for all eternity, which is why this sacrament can never be repeated. A seal, then, is a noun, an object word, something you receive today to carry all through life with you. But when I say, be sealed, I'm using a verb, a doing word, a changing word. The seal upon your forehead and your soul won't just celebrate God's ownership of you like a copyright mark. No, this kind of sealing, the Bible tells us, is about fruits like love, joy and peace, about superpowers like wisdom, courage and piety, about maturing in a really positive way so you can live the good news of Jesus Christ in word and deed. The good news, the really great news, is that the Holy Spirit has a consistent track record in providing people with those gifts and fruits, the superpowers and results they need. In our readings today, the power of God's Spirit is clear. The prophet Ezekiel says that if Israel will return to the Lord, his Spirit will transform them, cleansing, renewing, and restoring them to their rightful glory as his people. The Spirit works in our souls just as it did for the people of Israel. When we are down and out, feeling weak, sad, or defeated, we find comfort in knowing God is with us. As St Paul promises in our second reading, in our weakest moments when we don't even know how or what to pray, the Spirit is there to pick us up and help us He'll even pray on our behalf and draw us closer to God. At the beginning of his public life, after his baptism in the Jordan and confirmation by the Spirit descending on him like a dove, St Luke tells us that Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, was led by the Spirit into the wilderness for 40 days of trials before returning to Galilee again filled with the power of the Spirit to begin teaching and healing. In the face of temptations and attacks, surrounded by disbelief and confusion, forced to make important decisions for himself and for us, Jesus is given wisdom, courage, and right judgment. In our Gospel today, the Spirit-filled Jesus astonishes those in the synagogue with his teaching. To their amazement, he proclaims that the Anointed One, the one to bring freedom, sight, and insight, the one who will cheer us with good news, is already here among us. It is Jesus himself. 
So the effects of the Spirit were very evident in Jesus' own life. They were also evident in the lives of his first followers. After his ascension, Jesus' disciples were overwhelmed, hiding in a room, uncertain what to do next. But then wind and flame announced the coming of the Spirit of Pentecost, and all of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak. Once again, the Spirit is God sealing us for his purposes and giving us what we need for our mission as light to the world. Today we rejoice that our young people will be similarly equipped as sons and daughters of God. If baptism is like your first day at school in God's family, or confirmation is your graduation at the end of year six, but that doesn't mean you finished the course. Now, as a fully fledged member of the church, a young Christian adult, you will be sent out like Jesus, like the first disciples, to be tried, to contend with what is frightful and evil, to give witness to what is true and good and beautiful, above all, to the love of God. Welcome to the fullness of the Christian life. Pastors, sponsors, teachers and catechists, family and friends, today our candidates will receive the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Help them apply those gifts in lives of Christian faith and practice, of virtue and holiness, of the worship of God and love for all. Candidates for confirmation, when you receive the sacred chrism on your foreheads and hear the words, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit, know that you will receive the superpowers you need to be a faithful Christian. Know also that the church and her sacraments, especially confession and mass, are here for you, so you can regularly replenish that spirit within you. Pray often, seek the Spirit's guidance, and by his help, you will do great things. Now I invite you who are to be confirmed to stand up and profess your faith before this assembly. And because this is a Sunday, I invite all of you to stand up with our candidates and renew your own baptismal promises. And so I ask you, do you renounce Satan and all his works and all his empty promises? I do. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? I do. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, 
the Lord, the giver of life, who today through the sacrament of confirmation is given to you in a special way, just as he was given to the apostles on the day of Pentecost. I do. Do you believe in the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? I do. This is our faith. This is the faith of the Church. We are proud to profess it in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Let those to be confirmed only please remain standing. Dearly beloved, let us pray to God the Almighty Father. For these, his adopted sons and daughters, already born again to eternal life in baptism, that he will graciously pour out the Holy Spirit upon them to confirm them with his abundant gifts and through his anointing conform them more fully to Christ the Son of God. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who brought these your servants to new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, freeing them from sin. Send upon them, O Lord, the Holy Spirit, the Paraclete. Give them the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and fortitude, the spirit of knowledge and piety. Fill them with the spirit of the fear of the Lord, through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Please stand. My dear brothers and sisters, let us humbly pray to God the Almighty Father and be of one mind in our prayer, just as faith, hope and charity which proceed from his Holy Spirit are one. For these his servants, whom the gift of the Holy Spirit has confirmed, that planted in faith and grounded in love, they may bear witness to the Christ the Lord by their way of life. Let us pray to Lord, the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For their parents and sponsors, that by word and example, that they may continue to encourage those whom they have sponsored in the faith to follow in the footsteps of Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who prepare them for this sacrament, that the spirit of knowledge may continue to work through them in their mission. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the Holy Church of God, together with Francis our Pope, Anthony our Bishop, and all the bishops that gathered by the Holy Spirit, the Church may grow and increase in unity of faith and love until the coming of the Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the whole world, that all people who have one Maker and Father may acknowledge one another as brothers and sisters, without discrimination of race or nation, and with sincere hearts seek the kingdom of God, which is peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our, for our communities, that the spirit and wisdom and understanding may help us to welcome and adore Jesus, the bread of life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. O God, who gave the Holy Spirit to your apostles and willed that through them and their successors the same Spirit be handed on to the rest of the faithful, listen favourably to our prayer and grant that your divine grace, which was at work when the Gospel was first proclaimed, may now spread through the hearts of those who believe in you through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. And the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands, for the prayers and the glory of his name, and our good and affordable to his church. Receive in your mercy, O Lord, the prayers of your servants, and grant that, being conformed more perfectly to your Son, they may grow steadily in bearing witness to him as they share in the memorial of his redemption by which he gained for us your Holy Spirit. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. Ascending above all the heavens and sitting at your right hand, he poured out the promised Holy Spirit on your adopted children. Therefore, now and for ages unending, with all the host of angels. We sing to you with all our hearts, crying out as we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which shall be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, 
the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognising a sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with better Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, St. Mary of the Cross and MacKillop, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Anthony, our Bishop, Terry, Danny, and me, your unworthy servant, his assistant bishops, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Remember also, Lord, your servants reborn in baptism, whom you have been pleased to confirm by bestowing the Holy Spirit. And in your mercy, keep safe in them your grace. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you in your compassion, O merciful Father. And gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours for ever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command and for my divine teaching, we dare to say, us, Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope, 
and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Accompany with your blessing from this day forward, O Lord, those who have been anointed with the Holy Spirit and nourished by the sacrament of your Son, so that with all trials overcome, they may gladden your church by their holiness and through their works and their charity foster her growth in the world. Through Christ our Lord. Please be seated. Good afternoon, everyone. Archbishop Anthony, Bishop Terry, Bishop Richard, and Bishop Danny, candidates, sponsors, families, and friends. Today, a memory has been etched into our minds forever. We have been fortunate enough to receive the gifts and fruits of the Holy Spirit as a group of young Catholics coming together to celebrate our confirmation, bonding us forever. The gifts and fruits have been sent to us by God to be used in the right way so we can live life like Christ. We pray they grow stronger each day as we pour our faith in God and the Holy Spirit. And now, on behalf of all the candidates, sponsors, families and friends, here today at St Mary's, we would like to thank you, Archbishop Anthony, Bishop Terry, Bishop Richard, and Bishop Danny. For helping us complete our journey in the Sacrament of Confirmation and ask that you accept these cards as a, as a token of our appreciation. Thank you. My friends, it's a joy to receive those thank you cards, but if I could tell you a bit of a story of the best thanks that bishops receive. A few years ago, I entered one of our primary schools, and as soon as I went into the kindergarten class, a little boy jumped up and waved his hand around, said, excuse me, excuse me, do bishops get good pay? And I said, well, I, I don't know about that, but have you thought of being a priest? I said, priests are close to God and close to people, and they bring people and God closer to each other. 
And he looked at me in complete disbelief and he said, a priest, a priest, they don't get good pay. Our family only puts one dollar on the plate. <laughs> well, let me tell you, there is no better pay that a bishop receives than seeing the faces of our young people today full of faith and hope and love. And your faces, the faces of their families and sponsors and friends, holding out faith and hope and love for them. Thank you for the job you've done so far in their Christian childhood, bringing them to faith and the sacraments of initiation. That's the completion now of the first chapter of their Christian lives as children of God. Now they are young Christian adults, or at least adolescents. And they say that adolescence these days lasts from about the age of 10 to about the age of 40. And so you've still got a big job ahead of you, looking after your young people, encouraging them, inspiring them, guiding them in the ways of faith and of high ideals. Thanks be to God for each one of you, and on behalf of you all, congratulations to the newly confirmed. The Lord be with you. Bow down for the blessing. May God the Father Almighty bless you whom he has made his adopted sons and daughters, reborn from water and the Holy Spirit. And may he keep you worthy of his fatherly love. Amen. Amen. May his only begotten Son, who promised that the Spirit of truth would abide in his church, bless you and confirm you by his power in the confession of the true faith. Amen. Amen. And may the Holy Spirit, who kindles the fire of charity in the hearts of disciples, bless you and lead you blameless and gathered as one into the joy of the kingdom of God. Amen. And may Almighty God bless all of you who are gathered here, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go for the masses and the